Hello everyone, welcome to our project presentation. So our project name is Every Endangered Flora Identification. So this is the team. And Zinga Eduardo, Tan Lee, Sonali Shin Tre, and our mentor Keith Kalimbar. So our project is based on a research paper that trying to identify wood from endangered flora species. So in the paper, the researcher have to identify 46 different kind of endangered flora species with a traditional computer vision technique which was histogram oriented gradient with support vector machine and their accuracy was 97% so our goal for this project is going to use a modern technique by using feature extraction, feature engineering and deep learning to identify 46 different kind of species with an accuracy either going to be the same as the research paper or going to be higher than the research paper so this is our project overview so after we get the data set from uh, from the research paper we're going to fit the data set into different kind of machine learning model to get the prediction of each and then we're going to train a final machine learning models based on the prediction for the classification and then we're going to wrap everything up uh, with Selden and we're going to create a container image so that we can push that image to the cloud platform to use the API globally and uh, so on the client side the client just need an image and our API in order to uh, in order to call the final training model to classify the image so at so first we're going to talk about the first uh, first technique that we use we use a feature extraction technique so before uh, before doing any feature extraction we need to rescaling the image to um, to the model input like uh, the feature extraction model input so uh, so the original image that we got from the data set was our uh, was 20 uh, 2080 by what 1540 pixels so we need to rescale it into 224 by 224 pixels because that's the input of the um, uh, feature extraction model so in so in our project we use VGG16 to extract the features so in the so as you can see here this is the uh, this is the full model of, VG, of the VGG16 so we are uh, we only need the CNN model because the CNN model is going to do the feature extraction and then we're going to drop the uh, we're going to drop the bottom which is the fully connected neural network. So after we getting all of the feature, uh, fe uh, after we getting all of the feature from the VGC sixty, we're going to fit the of the feature uh, feature data set into a regression algorithm so in this case we use a logistic regression with grid search and the grid search help the, lo the logistic regression to find the best parameter to train the model and we and uh, and we decided to use logistic regression because we think logistic regression is the best, is the good algorithm to train uh, to classify uh, the feature of the image in this case and this is the the result so the res so as you can see here the y label is the true label is which is the correct label the correct like the actual uh, species and the x axis is the predicted label in this case they like the machine predicts the species so the horizontal line indicates the horizontal line indicate like the correct prediction so any number is not uh is not on the horizontal line it's mean like a, a wrong prediction from the machine uh from the model uh from the model so in, so as we as you can see there's uh there are not there are not a lot of number that outside of the horizontal uh outside of diagonal line so in this case the prediction is quite good so then we're going to so after so next we're going to talk the uh 
a CNN architecture, which is the second model. The second model only using pure deep learning method, uh, CNN architecture. So on the right hand side, this is the the architecture of a CNN. So at first, we need to resize the image to um, by uh, resize the image to two hundred fifty six by two hundred fifty six pixel and then we're using four different kind of convolutional layers and each convolutional layer we use for max pooling and finally we're going to use a dense layer and during the training uh, during the model training for the CNN architecture we did an augmentation for uh, augmentation uh, augmentation technique in this case we do a we did an image data generator and training model with the image net to uh, improve the accuracy of the CNN architecture and the training and the training image we did we split 80 20 so 80 80 percent is for the training images and the 20 percent we split in half 10 percent for validation and 10 percent for testing an image so at the sick epoch in the training validation accuracy graph, at the sick epoch we get a, uh, we get an accuracy of ninety one percent. But after uh, after ten epoch, the training accuracy was around eighty three percent, which is not too bad, and which is not too bad. But uh, but the good sign is the model general generalized well. So the final technique that we use in the in our project is we do a feature engineering and and a, a feature engineering with a fully connected neural network. So in the feature engineering, we use SIF scale invariant feature transform. So what SIF does is SIF is going to accept an image and it's going to extract all of the local feature in the image are known as the key points and these key points are very highly distinctive and invariant so our thought process was if the image uh, if the images come from the same species then their key points will be somewhat similar to each other in this case in this case, after extracting all of the local key points, we're going to do a brute force matching algorithm to perform the matching between the sieve of the training data and the testing uh, and the testing image. And we and finally we're going to use a fully connected neural network to classify uh, to classify the uh, to classify uh, to classify the uh, the descriptor of the key point matching that was uh, that was created by the push force algorithm and in this case uh, we use a dense net 121 layers for classification and this is a this is the image for one species alone and as you can see here the result is quite mm, is quite good so after that, after we training all three different kind of machine learning model, the final one we're going to do a model stacking because it's uh, improve accuracy. If we think machine learning model as a human, if we want to judge some like event, some kind of event or classifying something, it would be better to have multiple opinions rather than like relying on one opinions alone. So in this case, we you we did a um, we did some different kind of model stacking, uh, in with different kind of uh, we did different kind of model stacking algorithm. For example, ra random forest or logistic regression. And in, in this uh, in our project, we the we finally choose the uh, random forest for the. For the final models, uh, for the final model, because logistic regression is um, doesn't because logistic regression did not um, did not did not predict well compared to the random forest model. So for the deployment, we using Sheldon Core to create the API, and we 
using Docker to create a Docker images to push it on um, to the um, to the cloud platform to use the API global uh, globally. So this is the example code how to uh, how our models um, how our models call and how to use the API. So we I'm going to demonstrate our project. So this is our so this is our simple website that take in an image and in this case I'm going to take in for example a species that in Karin uh, Karinia species and when I click specify uh, identify so it return the Karinia as so it the prediction is predict the right species so the first prediction is just like the first model result. The second prediction is like the second model result. We don't have the third prediction because our third model, we haven't, the, our third model take too much time to train. So we couldn't get the model uh, on, uh, like we couldn't get the model on time. So in this case, we only have two model, uh, two models and uh, ensemble model based on the previous two. However, like uh, even the, like as you can see, our uh, model predict correctly but if we did some out sample validation there's some issue about our model for example I take a um, mahogany uh, I take a um, myrocylon species and when I click the identifying the object our uh, model predict is a carap uh, carapa, uh, carapa species so I can show you what is the Different between the Carapa species, Carapa P species, and Mahogany. So this is the Mahogany species, and this is our model predict. So as you can see here, our machine learning model doesn't and like. Um, like doesn't count the color, um, doesn't classifying the color. Like it, uh, it, so it, it's uh, overlook the color of the image, and instead it rather focus on the glob of the circle, and the uh, and, and the stripe patterns. So in so. So we so that that is our prediction where it's more our model went wrong. It doesn't um it doesn't. Uh, look at the colors of the image instead it looking at the circle and the and the stripe too much like in in here like there's a lump of a uh, of a of a group of circle and in here like there's also something similar to this so in this case we can we can say that our model is overfit to the training data set so that is our future goal if we have time in the future if we have time in the future so we're going so we're going to fine tuning each model and uh, we're going to doing a fine tuning on each model to um to overcome our overfit problem and if we have a small amount of money we can going we want to deploy our Docker images on a Kubernetes cloud platform for that everyone can use globally, and maybe and maybe we're going if the people doesn't want to use our API but they want to use uh, like uh, the interface we may we can redesign the web interface in the future, as you can see here our web interface is very simple and it's not very attractive for the user. So what we have learned in here is how we can uh, how we can do feature engineering and feature extraction uh, for small amount of data set and we learn how to create a CNN model from scratch and and we learn how to do model stacking or model assembling and finally we learn how to use Docker and how to use Selden to create API and how to push uh, Docker images to a cloud uh, platform to use it globally. So all of the code will be pushed on GitHub. 
uh, will be pushed on GitHub for everyone to look at for the future use. So this is our GitHub link. So this is our GitHub link. So um, thank you for listening to our project presentation. We'll hope to see you guys in the future.